that's the only thing that makes sense. That's why I like. I can totally accept him being able to mind control people like Cloud. I guess. Right. But like to well, like, because they have they have his uh, his uh, his genes or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, that's fine. But like the way that he can like become a Sephiroth or materialize as Sephiroth in one of the clones is just kind of weird. It's whatever. I'm not pretending that Final Fantasy VII has a perfect world. No, not at all. I mean, it has a really good world and really good lore. Um, I do... This is probably uh, somewhat unpopular, but I kind of wish Hojo was, like, the final baddie left. Um, like, you didn't fight him in Midgar, and maybe you go and you fight... I mean, obviously you have to fight Sephiroth, but then you just find that Hojo is, like losing his mind and he's like creating all these Sephiroth clones and whatever and then you have to take him down. Well actually if you look at Final Fantasy 7 Extended Universe, Dirge of Cerberus the final boss is basically Hojo. Oh. Because Hojo I guess survives and then Vincent has to fight as like Hojo infused mind controlled vice. I know you played that game on LPs, but I do not remember anything this, from the story. The story's so stupid. I, I just remember that uh, Reeve is there and Vincent's there. That's they, literally all I they remember. Inv they invent Deep Ground to have like a secondary antagonist throughout most of the game, and at the very end, they're like, "Oh, it's Hojo the entire time." Why do Final Fantasy games love doing that? At least for Vincent, like, Hojo ruined Vincent's yes, life yes. in every single regard. He stole Lucretia, he d made him a monster. So, like, it's thematic, but it's still kind of, like, okay. I don't know. I know that, like, once you, once you, in the original game, like, what, the, the one thing I love about RPGs, especially longer RPGs, and I think FF7 does a great job, is starting you out with, like, a purpose or a bad guy and you're like okay yeah we gotta take down Shinra and then you realize there's like so much more to it and it like keeps evolving I love stuff like that now it can be done really poorly like in FF8 where it's like hey we have to take down Edia uh you mean Ultimecia idiot it's like alright that's pretty bad or in FF9 it's like we gotta take down uh uh Queen Brahms and then no it has to be Kuja and now it's Necron at the last... Like, that's bad. But I think FF7 does a great job of just, like, once you get out to the real world being like, wait a minute, Shinra sucks, but they're not, like, the ultimate baddie. Yeah, uh, Final Fantasy VII has the most consistent world and, like, threat, and, like, it doesn't have to, like, have, like, a third act shift that's stupid. Yeah, even FF9 suffers from that a lot. Like I said, I feel like there would be a way... I think the game that does it the best is Final Fantasy X because, like, you have Sin as the ultimate evil. He's, like, an ever-present literal force in nature. But then you have, like, Spira and, like, the the religion of Yu Yevin. And, and Seymour, I think his name is. And Seymour is, like, a great secondary antagonist that sticks around for most of the game. But, like, Sin is, like, the perfect, like, force in nature thing. But they need that human element with Seymour and, like, Spear and everything. You get it. Yeah, FF10 has a great story. I do want to... That's on my list of games to replay, but... I would definitely have to do the PS3 slash... Oh, they have a PS4 version. Yeah. Uh, just because there are going to be some cutscenes. I just want to imagine. <laughs> Not even just that. Just the game has such long cutscenes for a PS2 game. It just goes on and on. I also think that the Titus laugh scene has, like, gained an infamous notoriety that isn't super warranted. Like, you watch the cutscene, it's not great, but, like, it makes sense in context. But people just look at that, like, line delivery and how, like, cringy it is. It's like, I don't know, I, I, I feel like it's not super well-deserved. Yeah, I could definitely see that. It's also been literally 20 years, so I can't say for 100%. I mean, if he laughed a little less... Crazy, I'm sure. He just it does it because because he's like super depressed and like Yuna's like, hey, you should laugh to feel better, and like he like forces himself. To yeah, that's why yeah. it's so awkward and forced. On him. I could definitely see a world in which 
the writers of FF7 somehow made Hojo like the final just bad guy because if you think about it like a lot of what made Sephiroth turn and become evil is because of Hojo right and we've discussed this at length but like if you're just like who's the most evil person in the FF7 universe I would listen to your arguments but it's got to come down to Hojo like he just literally does not care about anything except for science and, you know, creating the perfect organism, whatever. And he will just literally destroy lives, kill people, create crazy monsters, and he's like, I don't care, you know. So pay attention to this dumb game for a second as the dumpster fire grows bigger and smellier. Uh, I think Cloud just transferred to another world. The visual indicator, a lot of times, that rainbow effect. But I'm pretty sure that Sephiroth, like, made a cloud go to another parallel universe or something. I gotta say, like, I've I've read the theories and, like, the flowcharts, but... I forgot there was a whisper thing. It's still pretty stupid. Yeah. Anytime... I, it's just, like, multiverse stuff has been done to death by so many, like, corporate products that anytime... Anytime it happens, I just, like, roll my eyes and like, uh, even something that's real popular, like, uh, that Spider-Man movie where it has all the Spider-Men in it, which was, actually, you know, pretty solid, it still is, like, humans aren't meant to think of things in terms of multiple universes, because it just takes away, um, all of the stakes. It takes away stakes, and it's hard to understand exactly what's going on. It's like... I don't even really understand what Sephiroth's goal is. Like, he wants to merge all the worlds together. And I guess just kill them all? Because he's insane? It's like... Wow. What does it matter? Yeah. Is he just that insane that he's like, I must kill all life in all universes because I am lay evil? Yeah, even things I otherwise kind of like... Well, let me put it this way. There there just there just is no way to do any sort of extra parallel universe stuff without making like I said, without making it ridiculous. Even something like like Rick and Morty that makes it into a, a comedy thing. They're like, Oh hey, uh, there's an infinite number of Ricks and Mortys and they all get together at this uh, I forget what they call it, this place where there's a billion Ricks and a billion Mortys. And I think Funny. there's a, I think there's a Rick and Morty episode where like the main like Alpha Morty dies and like he's just dead forever. Yes, and then they, uh... and then they just like are like blow it off like eh, whatever. It's nihilistic, cynical. Life doesn't matter. Who cares if Morty is dead? There's another replacement. And then they, I think they eventually go back to that universe for some reason and like everything has gotten. It becomes Mad Max essentially in that in that universe. So then, uh, in the last couple seasons, they've had, like, a parallel universe Beth, the mom. So they have, like, two Beths. And, uh, let me tell you, uh, you can tell what Rick and Morty writers, um, things they like, uh, is based on, uh, based on how they write stuff. They're like, I mean, you can, you can probably put two and two together. Oh, there's two Beths. What if we... <laughs> it's like, okay. So, Cloud just gave Eris... This is pretty much... I th I'm pretty sure this is Alpha Eris. Because the White Whispers are here. But Cloud gave Holy that was full. And she took it behind her head. And I guess she just now has Holy and then gave back empty Holy to Cloud. I'm not sure what happened there either. Because in the... I forget what they do in this game, but in the original game, she always keeps saying, I have this materia, it's useless. The, the white materia. Yeah, the holy that's in part... in Reaper for most of the game is empty. Okay. No, it's empty in Zack's timeline. I hate... Very I, cool. I hate multiverse stuff. Press R2. Press R2. Oh, it's literally over. Matters... Yeah, the only... You know, you know what the worst part about um, multiverse stuff? Is when uh, big corporations 
Okay, use now it. he's getting sent back to the original timeline that he was in. Universe. Okay, he's going back. So the worst part is when they... If, if, if they want another actor to be a certain character, but obviously they can't just, like, get rid of the original person, they'll just do a multiverse thing and be like, hey, you always wanted, uh, you know, Jim from The Office. People are always like, I want Jim from The Office to be uh, Mr. Fantastic, the main guy in the Fantastic Four. And he was probably like, nah, I don't want to be in, like, a bunch of dumb movies. So then they did uh, the newest Doctor Strange movie where they just have, like, a bunch of cameos and stuff. And they're like, it's Jim from The Office, it's Fantastic Four, Mr. Mr. Fantastic. And then he gets, like, exploded in, like, ten minutes. <laughs> At least that's kind of cool. I mean, that, that part's cool, but it's still, like, it, like, it's it's things that just make your average person who's not thinking at all just go, I see thing, thing I want to see. Yes, yes, yes. Not, not that I care about the MCU at all, and I have literally never seen a single one of the movies from any of the phases. <laughs> you should see Iron Man 1. That's Kino. Okay. That's actually good. But apparently X-Men and... Or Wolverine and Deadpool, whatever the newest one is, they kind of like retconned a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, like... um, uh, spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine. Even though by the time people see this, it'll be like a month since it's out. But in the very beginning, Deadpool is looking for for Logan Wolverine, and he finds out that uh, Wolverine is dead and has been dead for a long time because he he's like, "There's no way he's dead. I'm gonna get his grave site and he's gonna be alive." And he's like a skeleton. So then the very beginning of the movie is him, like, da I'm not joking here. I, I'm not making this up. Dancing to the song Bye 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 by NSYNC with Wolverine's uh, skeleton and, like, killing a bunch of enemies with that skeleton. That is 100% true. That is 1,000% true. <laughs> so then they have to go to a bunch of different multiverses to find, like, another Logan. And the one, the one they find is, like, the loser Logan because all the good Logans were, like, F you Deadpool and just, like, you know beat him up or send him flying or whatever they do have one good one good joke with that he walks into one bar uh and i think it's the first one he finds the other logan he's like it's logan and logan's sitting at the bar and he's like what do you want bub and deadpool's like come with me i'm deadpool i'm crazy and wolverine stands up and he's like five foot tall <laughs> like it's like super obvious he's like really really short and I love that because, like, canonically, for whatever reason, uh, Wolverine is, like, five foot two. I don't know why. But he just literally is five foot two. Like, that's his, like, bio. He's all, It's always been that way. And I, I that was one of those things where, like, I think your average person who doesn't know that would be, like, short guy funny. But, like, knowing a little bit more, you're like, oh, that's actually kind of, that's actually kind of cool. It also makes no, like, I just, when they created the X-Men, they were like, everyone else is normal size, but they're like, hmm, this Canadian guy with adamantium uh, in, in his body, let's make him, like, a short king. Okay. <laughs> What's the movie reason why Deadpool has to have a Wolverine? It's real, it's, it's honestly dumb. It, uh, it, it has to do with, like, uh, Oh my god, I'm trying to remember. It's only been a couple weeks. There's these people that watch over all the timelines, and his timeline is. Uh, I'm his, already rolling my eyes. His timeline is going to. Deadpool's timeline is going to be ending. Uh, because Wolverine, the Wolverine who died in the movie Logan, uh, was like the. Uh, essentially the Jesus, I guess. He was the thing that brought everything together, right? I don't, they, they had a term for it. And since he died, that universe is going to naturally be coming to an end in a cataclysmic event. And Deadpool was like, no, but I like my friends and stuff. And so then he went looking for a bunch of Logans to find one. And he found one that was like, I don't have any friends, bub. I'm a big loser, bub. Dude, that's and so lame. The movie itself, I will say, was pretty solid. It was like a six or seven out of ten. It was way too long. It was like two and a half hours long or something. And like... With 30 minutes left, I was like, okay, come on, right? It, it Like, Oppenheimer is like three hours and something minutes, and I was like, I want more of this, right? But for Deadpool, I was like, please, for the love of God. Uh, but that's 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 the 100% reason. And the second the one guy started explaining, like, 
uh, these timelines, your timeline's ending. I was like, okay. And, and, and it went on. It was like 10 minutes of explaining it. And I was like, stop. <laughs> and then the guy explaining the timelines was supposed to be a good guy. But then he was like, actually, I'm going to turn on you right now because your timeline is supposed to end. And I was like, uh. <laughs> So then they send Deadpool to, um, essentially, like, a nowhere, if that makes sense. Like, it's a, it's a place where they, it, 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 it's, it's a place where they send all the losers of the universe. So there's, like, a million Deadpools there, because, honestly, every, every, in-universe, everyone hates Deadpool. Like, his whole thing is, I want to be an X-Men, and they're like, yeah, no thanks, bud. And, like, real superheroes are like, yeah, you're too crazy. And then supervillains, of course, are like you're not a villain so he's like an outcast so he gets literally outcasted to this like mad max world where there's a bunch of deadpools and stuff they do have uh one cameo that i clapped at it was uh wesley snipes as blade and uh isn't there some blade movie coming out it has been in production forever oh but i don't think it's wesley snipes because uh, i mean that dude's like 60 and I read the uh, the behind the scenes like apparently like how Wesley Snipes like acted and it just makes me laugh because he was like he literally th truly thought he was Blade. I think it was uh it was Blade two or three. There's that infamous or famous uh, interview with Patton Oswalt, uh, who was in that movie for some reason. And there was a scene. Please don't stop me if you heard this, but tell me if you heard this. There's a scene where all Blade has to do is he's just laying there asleep or knocked out and he has to open his eyes and that's the scene like literally just like suddenly opens his eyes and he's awake right he's just like that and he literally <laughs> didn't he no he literally didn't he did not and the the interviewer was like why didn't he open his eyes and pat nozzle was like he just didn't and if you watch that movie or if you look at that scene you can find it on youtube easily they had to and this is like mid 2000s early 2000s cgi they had to cgi his eyes opening because he just wouldn't open his eyes. <laughs> it's it's awesome. it's the most bizarre thing possible. But he was also like really really on like alcohol and drugs and stuff, so you know, it makes sense. Also, one last movie thing cuz we're about to get into a bunch of FF7 stuff. Uh well, the parts like ending. Oh, okay. Oh, we're like I have to get ready for That's right, you do. Yeah, this yeah. Is like the okay, well, let me get this real quick. The Borderlands movie came out and it is like flopping tremendously. Did you watch the half in the bag on on it? I think it's been like a couple days. Which movie again? Ha the Borderlands movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact, like, oh, it feels so good. I hate the guy who runs Gearbox, uh, Randy Pitchford. He's the worst human ever. And oh, it's so good. It's, flop <laughs> it's like a gig of flop too. <laughs> no, it is. I'm actually surprised the half in the bag guys even saw it because both of them were like, I don't know anything about Borderlands, and I'm like, that's weird. I think they just wanted to make fun of it. Yeah, that makes sense. And the casting, like, the second I heard it, I was like, I, I want to strangle just the movie. Not a person, but the movie. They were like, all right, Claptrap, the little uh, robot thing. It's, like, kind of funny and annoying. Who should we get to be the Jack Black? Just make it Jack Black. And it's like, it's okay, badass. who's the one person in the entire universe that if we put with Jack Black would be even more annoying than Jack Black? Kevin Hart. Put Kevin Hart in there. Get it. It's a Borderlands movie. We have to get Kevin Hart being loud and annoying and Jack Black saying a bunch of one-liners about pooping or something. It's like, holy crap. And then the main girl, like, I, I don't believe in um, when you uh, make a video game movie that you have to get someone that looks exactly like the character. But the main girl, Lilith, is like a 20-year-old. Like, she's like super hot. Like, that's like her character. She's like... Lilith is a demon in in Christian mytho in, in in the Christian religion who she like, plays like a fifty year old and and it's like a fifty year old and it's like what like Lilith is literally Adam's first wife that he was like yeah you're no good I'm gonna go with Eve right like you're just you're too much you're too ridiculous right and they're like oh let's get some fifty year old to play it and then they're like hey what's another old lady we could get in this movie let's put Jamie Lee Curtis in it and I'm like. Guys, you don't have to, like, get someone who loves Borderlands, but, like, holy crap. So, yeah, the fact that that went bad and uh, Gearbox is not cool, so 
Um, I know I know a lot of good people who like Borderlands, so I'm curious when I see them to be like, did you see Borderlands the and movie? And I think the thing about Borderlands is that like people like the gameplay, like the looter shooter format, but like Borderlands humor and writing is so bad. You play Borderlands two for like uh, thirty minutes, I'm just like, I want to shut it off because it's like <laughs> it's Reddit the video game. It's like I can understand people getting making like thinking it's funny, but like it just never shuts up. Yeah, well, that's why. Like, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it when it comes to streaming. I'm not gonna pay a single cent for it. But I can't wait to see Jack Black just be like, "It's me, it's Jack Black. I'm loud. Poop, poop, kids." Also, the one last thing. When I found out it was PG-13 and not R-rated, I was like, "What were they thinking?" Because Borderlands is a super mature-rated game. Like, or, do you think there's gonna be like, like twelve-year-old kids be like? Oh yeah, Borderlands 3 came out in like 2015 or something like that, and it was a huge flop. So it hasn't been a relevant series for like 10 plus years. The only people you're going to get to see it are like the people who are like, I like Borderlands 1 and 2, right? So like, what's the point? Oh, it's just, yeah. <sighs> Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you guys my review when I watch it, when it comes on streaming in literally, like, two weeks. At this, I mean, they're gonna, like, dump it on streaming on something soon. Alright, guys, see ya. Bye!